End times, signs, latest events, 2020. Some strange things be happening around this world these days, guys. Thank you everyone for being here. I hope everyone is safe and well. A massive thank you to my Patreons and channel members. And also thank you to everyone who watches and likes and shares my videos. God bless you all. So, by the time this video gets out, it will probably be December 9th, 2020. And this is your End Times Prophecy News Update. Major winter storm buries parts of Alps under more than 10 feet of snow in Europe. A major winter storm that started affecting parts of Europe on Friday, December 4th, 2020, has dumped more than 10 feet of snow in parts of Italy and Austria by the end of the 6th of December, and more than 30 inches of rain in the town of Barsis in northern Italy. Snow is still falling with up to 2.6 more feet expected in the Dolomites, Italy and Car Carnathia and Ostorilo, Austria on Tuesday, December 8th. Before the event is over, some parts of the Alps might end up under more than 16 and a half feet of snow. Wow. The general pattern over the North Atlantic and Europe has changed as we enter the much more dynamic weather lately. Marco Korasek of the Severe Weather Europe said. A very deep upper thorough low has emerged into southwestern Europe while persistent upper level ridge is placed across western Russia and eastern Europe, Korasek explained. In between a powerful southerly jet stream is advecting high moisture towards the north. A significantly warmer air mass is being pumped from the Mediterranean into Central Europe and the Alps. While at the surface, a deep secondary low is emerging over Italy. This has introduced a textbook scenario for extreme rainfall and snowfall for the Alpine region precisely across northeast Italy, southeast Austria, and northwest Slovenia. A combination of excessive rainfall, snow melting, and snowfall at higher altitudes could lead to damaging flooding and avalanches in the region, Corsac said Friday, December 6th. Sadly for the region, Corsac was spot on. Most of the snow fell on Sunday, December 6th, bringing widespread disruption and travel chaos with flooding at lower levels and power lines down in places. A major winter storm that started affecting parts of Europe on Friday the 4th of December has dumped more than 10 feet of snow in parts of Italy and Austria, and more than 30 inches of rain, guys, in northern Italy. So the snow is still falling to this day, guys. They're expecting almost three more feet in towns of northern Italy, Carthania, and Australio, Austria on Tuesday the 8th before the event is over, so they might get another three feet of snow. They're saying a significantly warmer air mass is being pumped from the Mediterranean up into the European Alps. Fire Service reported 2,500 interventions from December 5th to December 7th, with most of them in Veneto, 1,000 of them in Veneto, followed by 300 in Emilia Romagana. The worst of the flooding took place along the Panaro River in Modena province of Emilia Romagano region. Residents of Nonotola were reportedly affected particularly bad, with 175 people rescued from flooding. In total, 364 people in the region were evacuated. The flooding and rescue operations in non Nonotola continued into December 7th. Mudslides, avalanches, torrential rain, and rivers breaking their banks turned the first weekend in December into a nightmare and brought much of the country to its knees, Anasa reported, A-N-S-A. -A. The town of Barsis in the Pordanone province recorded more than 30 inches of rain since the start of the event, the heaviest in 30 years. Veneto and Torinto in the far northeast suffered avalanche alarms while roads and rail links were interrupted by heavy snow and flooding, ANSA reported. A fire vehicle crashed into a torrential stream near Bologna and the fire team had to be rescued after a bridge gave way. Rome was lashed by thunderstorms and torrential showers and access to the timber banks were shut after the river neared dangerously high levels. The Brenier Pass, which had been closed on Sunday after more than three feet of snow fell, was reopened to traffic on Monday. Death toll climbs to 24 
over 555,000 homes affected in southern Thailand's worst floods in 50 years. The death toll from southern Thailand's worst flood in 50 years has risen to 24 as of Sunday, December 6, 2020. Roughly 180,000 houses have been flooded with Nakahun Si Thamamart, the worst hit province. The region has been lashed by heavy rains brought by the southern monsoon over the Gulf of Thailand since November 25th. According to the Disaster Prevention and Mitigation Department, flooding has claimed more lives, including a woman who drowned in Farasang district of Surat Thain, and two women who also suffered the same fate in Safing Phara district of Songkhala. More than 555,000 houses have been flooded, with Nakahan Si Thamahat, the hardest hit province, where 19 fatalities and 180,000 flooded homes were reported. The death toll from southern Thailand's worst flood in 50 years has risen to, risen to 24, guys, as of Sunday the 6th, 2020. Pray. So like I said, over 180,000 houses have been flooded, and I really don't want to try and pronounce that province again, but it's the worst hit province. Nakahon Si Thamahart. The region has been lashed by heavy rains brought by southern monsoons over the Gulf of Thailand since November 25th. So the DPMD says flooding has claimed more lives, including two women who drowned in Sarat Thahin and two women who also drowned in Sathahing Phara district of Sakalong. Those poor women. So now they're saying almost 600,000 houses will be affected by the time this is over. That's a lot, guys. 600,000 houses, over 25 fatalities, and almost 200,000 flooded homes are being reported, still being reported every day. The disaster department added that while the situation eased a little bit, more floods were reported in Surat Thain, Trang, and Songkhala, despite water levels slowly receding in other provinces. Weather forecasts showed that there would be less rain along the Gulf Coast on Monday, December 7th, but up to 60% more rains are expected for the rest of the week. Unusually large tornado hits Sakahaka, Saudi Arabia, one of the largest ever documented in the country's history. A massive tornado formed on the outskirts of Sakaka in Al Jahaf, Saudi Arabia on Saturday, December 5th, 2020. Meteorologists said it was unusually big for the region and one of the largest tornadoes ever documented in the country's history. The incredible tornado occurred in the middle of the desert and reached an uninhabited area, which is good, according to Metsuo Meteorology. Weather radars captured the storm supercell responsible for the tornado in Al Jahaf province in northern Saudi Arabia, it stated. The storm system also brought heavy rain and hail. The Meteorological Authority added that among the affected regions were Tabak, Hale, al Qasim, and parts of Madanina Raida. Wind speeds were between 16 and 40 kilometers an hour, while waves on the Red Sea reached up to 6.5 feet. A massive tornado formed on the outskirts of Sakahaka al Jahaf, Saudi Arabia, on Saturday, which we already read. So meteorologists are saying this is one of the biggest tornadoes that has ever happened in the country. Just the fact that they're having a tornado in Saudi Arabia is rare on its own, guys. Luckily, this massive tornado occurred in the middle of the desert and reached uninhabited areas, according to Metsuo Meteorological. So I think I threw pictures in there of some, these are some pictures actually caught by people on the ground. This is what the tornado actually looked like in Saudi Arabia. They're saying the storm system also brought heavy rain and hail. Hail is very unusual for Saudi Arabia, guys. The Meteorological Authority added that among the affected regions, I'm sorry, I'm going to have a hard time pronouncing these, but Tabak, Hale, al Qasim, and parts of Medanhan Radha. Wind speeds between 40 and 50 kilometers an hour. Well, like I said, the waves on the Red Sea reached up to six and a half feet, which is big because the Red Sea is not like an ocean, right? It's a sea, so seven foot waves are pretty high. This tornado was one of the biggest and most unusual tornadoes this country has ever seen, according to local reports. It covered a small territory and moved very slowly. Thankfully, no injuries were reported, but authorities advised residents to stay indoors as the region is experiencing unpredictable weather conditions. Abadullah al basanad a professor of climate change and Department of Geography at the University of Qasim, 
noted that it was one of the biggest tornadoes ever recorded in the region. The tornado, which formed southeast of al Jahaf, is one of the largest hurricanes that has ever been documented with pictures in Saudi Arabia, al Basanad stated. Minor earthquake detected in northern Alabama. A minor earthquake was detected by instrumentation Thursday night, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. A magnitude 2.1 earthquake occurred 18 miles west-northwest of Decatur, Decatur in Lawrence County, in the north-central part of the state, at 8.49 p.m. Thursday. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. The USGS announced the earthquake Friday morning. It is the eighth earthquake detected in Alabama in 2020 of at least 1.5 magnitude and the seventh in the northern half of the state. Such small earthquakes, though rarely felt, are uncommon in Alabama. The strongest earthquake in Alabama this year took place on June 25th as a magnitude 2.9 earthquake about 22 miles east-northeast of Jasper in the central part of the state. The earthquake occurred more than 4.3 miles below the Earth's surface. Cortland was the town closest to the earthquake at 2.3 miles away, according to the USGS. The quake was 22 miles east of Muscle Shoals, whoever that is. Godzilla! Dust storm may have a connection to low Arctic sea ice. A monster dust storm stretched across the Atlantic this past summer. Its origin may have a surprising connection. Late June of 2020 witnessed an immense dust storm crossing the Atlantic Ocean from the Sahara Desert. In cities across Central America, the Caribbean and North Carolina to Texas coast, skies turned dark as a thick layer of dust blotted out the sun. In all the record books, never has a Saharan dust storm matched either the size of this one or the thickness of the dust it carried with it. As a result, some forecasters gave this extreme event the nickname Godzilla. Once the dust storm had subsided, a team of researchers led by Diana Francis of Khalifa University of Science and Technology in the United Arab Emirates set to work tracing the specific weather patterns that caused it to form. In a new study published this week, Francis and her colleagues described the development of what's known as a subtropical high just off the coast of North Africa. Coupled with a low pressure circulation over West Africa to the south, this set up a persistent pattern of record strong winds that picked up dust from the desert and carried it for thousands of kilometers. The development of the subtropical high off the African coast had a deterministic role in both dust emissions and rapid westward transport of the airborne dust across the tropical Atlantic, Francis said in a Scripps Institution of Oceanography press release. The clockwise circulation associated with the high intensified the African easterly jet, a jet stream present over the Sahara around 5 kilometers in altitude, which rapidly transported the dust towards the Caribbean and southern United States. One aspect of this that surprised the researchers was how this immense dust storm had little to no impact on the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. Saharan dust blowing over the Atlantic usually has a dampening effect on tropical cyclones. This is due to the dust scattering sunlight and thus cooling the sea surface under the plume. Despite this record large and intense dust storm persisting over the Atlantic for the latter half of June, the 2020 hurricane season went on to break its own records with 30 named storms from Arthur to Iona. Thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not already. Please like the video and please leave a comment down below guys. I really like to read your comments. God bless you all and your families.